speak, Austerlitz, which is the book that I give to all the young people who want to come and work with me and learn from me. And I say, read this book and then come back. And nobody comes back. <laughs> and of course, the idea of India, without which none of my work happens, because most of my work is addressed to the idea of India. I should correct that, not this idea of India. Now it's very difficult to say that. But anyway, this was about three or four years ago. Now, do you remember the champagne bottle I told you about? And it becoming, you know, hmm, Dianita, that could be nice in a larger size. And so the book cart happened with my House of Love book cart. Um, I made different covers for each person that had been somehow connected with the book and then made this cart and forced Peter to let me sell my book at my opening. And it was fantastic because my pockets were stuffed with money. And then I made a gold bangle out of it. I forgot to wear them, but by now I have five of these gold bangles that I make from all my book sales. And my other dream, other than being on the footpath, is at the end of my life to have my wrist full of these gold bangles, the whole arm from here, with all my book sales. So it's really important for me that you buy my book. <laughs> and then I made a cart for the file room and somehow convinced uh, the art fair to let me walk around the fair with the cart, again selling my book. Then it was becoming a traffic hazard, and so I had to move out. And of course, the big coup was the Venice Biennale. I thought, if I can get my book in there, then that's something. And Susanna Gansheimer had very particular ideas about what she wanted from the German pavilion. And I was obsessed with my book by then because I had made file room. I had seen how it could work on the wall. And I wanted to fill the entire space with the book and sit there and make more books every day. But she wanted, anyway, so that didn't happen. But chance again, a wall had to be built for the projections inside. And then we had to think about what to do with the wall. And she said, would you like a poster? Would you like to leave it blank? And I said, well, you know, we do have I do have those books, you know, the file room books. That could look quite nice. Quickly called Gaurav in my studio. I said, Jaldi se usko Photoshop mein aise diwar pe laga ke bhejo, dikhao. Because I knew she wouldn't get it unless I actually showed it to her. And, and that's what I did. I showed it to her and it worked. And so the book was there inside the Venice Biennale. Outside, you could buy the book for 30 euros. And I would individualize each book for you. I took lots of stamps. And so each person, they didn't realize it, were actually getting a unique book. And so that's me doing my, and Okwi made a beautiful um, sort of speech for it in all seriousness. Because it's, it's amazing where the support comes from. I think there are people that just, they totally understand that this is your thing and you would, you would die if you couldn't have your books around. And now that I found the way to put it on the wall, I'm really, really happy. But at Hayward too, I said, I said, this was a book I made. I didn't make an exhibition for it. The book was the work. I want to show it as my work. And they said, oh, but you know, file room is okay. You've individualized it. How can we just open the book? And I said, exactly like that. We open it, but I want it insured for as much money as one of my museums. And they said, come on, Danita, it's a book. As Martin said to me when I wanted to insure the Gerhard book for five lakhs of rupees some 10 years ago. But, you know, I think, I think that's... I think the books are really valuable. I think just because they're mass-produced artist books doesn't make them less valuable. And then when I've made those little black books and they've got 30 prints in them, I think, and I showed it at MMK like that, and finally people said, oh yes, that's the work. I'll come to that. This is the entry to my house. I've made a sort of fake bookshop with, and a little window in the door that if you don't own my book, then buy it. Only then you can come in. The cart is to, if people come to my house and don't have the book, then I can sort of take the cart around at dinner parties and have them buy the book. And if I know them well, why buy one? Buy five. Um, and then the carts grew and they became 
they became the file museum. I think because I had been working in so many archives and I had got really sort of involved in the architecture of the archives because the architecture is not like asking Bijoy Jain to say, I've got an archive, can you build me the most beautiful studio for it? No, it's some lady sitting in the back room in Dehradun saying, Are Baba, I've got all these files, what am I going to do with them? Carpenter ko bulao. Uh, painter ko bulao, carpenter comes in, ye file hai, ye jaga hai, udha chhat pe bhi bana do, zameen pe bhi bana do, just fill up the whole space and that is done. And then there is a painter who will do the cataloging system. Okay. Um, so, so then I came up with the form of the, of the museum. And this brings me to the third chapter, which is the ongoingness of work. Somehow, when I saw my work on the gallery wall, I felt that it had, it had become sterile, that I couldn't move it any longer, that I couldn't rearrange it. And why couldn't I make a work that could be endlessly rearranged, that I could even keep adding to, that wouldn't stop with the exhibition? And that's how slowly between the book cart and working in all these archives for two years, completely obsessed with the archives, came the structure of the museum. And this was the first file museum. So you open one side and it becomes a corner. You open the other side and it becomes a door, uh, so it becomes a wall. And then I think I've lost the slide of the inside. There's a structure inside which supports it where my reserve collection is kept. And then you can very easily twist the bars and change, keep changing. So you might say, okay, Dayanita, today let's show all the Godrej cupboards. So there are 140 images in the file museum. At one time, you can only display 40. So there are endless possibilities. One day you can say, all the women archivists. One day you can say, uh, want to have all the Godrej cupboards. So you can just, it's, it's, um, it's endless, and that's what I was looking for. I wanted a work that could constantly keep changing, and that I could add to, both with new work and with old work. Because the work changes from its setting, no? from where it is in the sequence. So there is a going forward, and there's a going back. That's my go way closer. It's my second name. I'm moving forward. In Kochi, there's a lot of work Kochi, in fact, I tried to make it all with new work from this year. But what I like, no, there's some, I think, from my earlier work, yeah. So there's this constant back and forth. And then there's an image like the girl on the bed, which is part of my Go Away Closer exhibition. But it's also part of my Little Ladies Museum. How can I ever not have that image become part, be part of what I do? It'll keep reappearing. So now with these museums, I was able to find that form that could go endlessly on and on. So now if somebody buys a museum, they buy those images that are in the museum, but they also know that they might have to add to the museum. That in the Museum of Machines, if I feel that it needs eight more images, that a FedEx packet would arrive with, or the star shippers would arrive with this little crate with eight prints that they would have to add to that museum. That part became very important. The dissolving of the chronology became very important. You know, when was this picture taken? How does it matter when it was taken? Because a picture is realized so many different times in so many different combinations. So I think there are at least two dates to an image. When you make the image, like you press the shutter, whatever that means, and when you realize the image, and then you re-realize the image. So the chronology dis dissolving is very important. That I can work in a more organic way becomes very important. Because remember, I've worked with the book. I'm used to the tactile. I don't want something behind glass completely tucked away forever. I want you to be able to hold something in your hands. I want you to be able to take it to bed even. So I made for Steidl the file room book into a file museum, but then, Kyoto Museum of Modern Art, didn't have a budget, but really wanted to show my work. And it was, I can't pronounce the name, but the great artist Marcel Brothier. And I wanted to be in the exhibition also. And so I said, well, 
you could ask Steidel to ship 72 books and you cut up two books. I authorize you to cut them up and, you know, use rice glue and make this exhibition. And that's what you see at the Kyoto Museum of Modern Art. And then the show travels to the Tokyo Museum of Modern Art. And this I just wanted to show you because this is how, again, how I travel and work. And, you know, if I'm making an exhibition, then little prints are made with the size of the mat. So I can keep playing with these. I like to do this on planes as well, in hotel rooms. I work very well in hotel rooms. So very important that everything be small, that I can carry it around. And at, suddenly I say, oh my God, that woman is wearing a polka dotted scarf. Where did I have the polka dotted scarf? And then, then I, have to go into, I have to go into another packet of mine. And then I have to find that particular image. But while I'm looking for that image, which of course I may not find, I find some other images. And this brings me to another way that I work, which is with these bundles. But then this is how the museums get, were first structured. So these sort of models get made of how I might want to display things. And this is in fact the very, very first, the second, the dummy for the Museum of Chance, which is going to be displayed in Delhi which is part of Museum Bhavan. The first one was left in a, in a taxi in London, the first model. But that's also very exciting because there's some taxi driver in London that has the very first model. But please don't think this is an invitation to take any of these things away because now they are really valuable to me. Shireen, I can't give you this one. So this is, this is really, this is my, um, I feel like I'm running you through my underwear drawer because this is really my, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, and I'm a little embarrassed, but you know, this is, this is really at the heart of how I work. This, these little, little portlies and taping things together and cutting my fingers. And this is how I imagine the exhibitions you know, with these models all set up, and then you go in from here and out from there. And then, you know, the imagination works and it becomes a whole show at the Hayward Gallery. And then, of course, great, great cu curator. I mean, Stephanie Rosenthal, really fantastic curator, but the project also grew with her. Um, and then we, I made the museums and I said, you know, I don't really like your furniture. I would prefer my museums to have their own museums, uh, their own furniture. And so these tables were made and benches were made. And she said, Dayanita, we cannot afford one more crate. We are completely out of budget now. And I said, well, I can make a furniture that fits into the museums. So then what's the problem? So, so I sort of cornered them into it. And so now my museums have to travel with their own furniture. And each museum has within it small boxes because while I'm setting up the museum, so while I was setting up Museum of Furniture, I realized that I had within it a Museum of Vitrines. So I took these little boxes and put them on the wall and that became a separate work. And Museum of Embraces came out of Museum of Chance. So there are cousins, there are offsprings, the museums give birth to other museums, and finally all the museums come to my apartment. My apartment becomes Museum Bhavan. I charge a fee of 500 rupees for you to come in, and it's only open on one full moon, first full moon, something like that. It'll be very precise. And that'll be my museum. And I will keep adding and changing, to, changing it as much as I like. So already in my studio, I brought a picture. I've started to build these labyrinths that you have to walk through to come to where my desk is. So do you see the parallel between this and the contact sheets? That's why I photographed a contact sheet to show you. You see, I'm used to seeing at least 12 images at one time. The single image is a different thing. It's one way. It's not the only way. And certainly not for me. And so this is, again, the Hayward Gallery on the wall at the back. You see Museum of Embraces. On the tables, I made a shrine for Abaji, Zakir's father. And you know, then 
also in the work, there are these conversations that are ongoing. So there's the ongoingness of the work, but there are ongoing conversations with people like Mona, Zakir, uh, the Pal Chaudhrys in Calcutta, Gabriella, who I've photographed since she was 10, um, many, many girls in Bombay, girls and boys in Bombay that I've photographed over the years. So the conversations just don't go away. The work never ends. There's a book, there's an exhibition, there's a retrospective even. But the work still continues. And very often, when I go back to the people like Mona, each time I work with Mona, a new form emerges. I don't know if I'll have time to show you, but I'll try. So this is again at the art fair. Mona, Mona is my friend, who I think everybody who knows me would know. Mona Ahmed, my friend who is a eunuch who lives in the Kabristan in Delhi, who I've been photographing since 89. We made a book called Myself, Mona Ahmed in 89, no, in 1990. Started in 89, made the book in 2001. But that was my main work in 2013 in the Venice Biennale, was a still moving portrait of Mona. I hope I'll have the possibility to show it to you. This is at the art fair, managed to convince Neha that it was very important for me to sell my books inside the art fair. And so I made, I don't like to call it a performance, but I take it very seriously, this individualizing of the book and the idea that each person gets a special, unique piece. And this is, this is uh, the Jaipur Literary Festival where I was told I couldn't bring my cart. And that's Jeff Dyer. And this is again the file room book exhibition in Varanasi. And I had shown Go Away Closer in Varanasi and it was very important for me to go back to the same gallery and show file room in the same way. And people came in, even in Venice, people thought, oh, this crazy Indian photographer likes to put her photographs on different colored cloth. Only the people who were tall uh, realized that it was a book. But that's all right. I do, it does, it's fine. It's not a problem. You don't understand it's a book. It's very important for me to know that my whole work is there, that it's not just one image that's been taken out of that whole body of work. And now, at the Max Muller Bhavan, you get this structure. You may never open the book, you may never look at it, but I feel very good that you have, you have the whole book. Let me show it to you right now while I remember. So, this is Museum of Chance. The book has 88 images inside, and it has 88 different covers. 44 different covers in front, 44 different covers at the back. It has this special structure that you can put on the wall and still use it as a book. That was important to me. I'm not trying to destroy the book. The book is the work, but the show has 88 of these on the wall at Max Miller. So they're like this. Tomorrow, I'm going to go and this we decided just on the spur of the moment, I'm going to turn the exhibition around. Each book will be turned around. And so we have a secret exhibition, a second part to the exhibition that will open tomorrow. I have no idea what it'll look like because I was planning for the front. But again, because it was chance, I mean, it's a very carefully planned chance, because it, it's chance, but it also has to work in any order. So, and this was back to the art fair. This was, this was, a, this was a great coup. The French government puts these pins on different artists. I don't know how to pronounce the word. So, First, they sent me the letter to Monsieur Dayanita Singh, which is framed in my studio. <laughs> then they wanted it back, and I said, no, no, I don't know where it is now. But they said, will you come, we, when can we do the event at the ambassador's house? Now, when Mona had to do her book release, when we were doing Mona's book release, the Swiss ambassador was going to release it. And she had said, I Swiss embassy. Nahi jaungi. Ambassador ko bolo, Apni Kali Mercedes me, wo lal pa, um, 
हाँ लाल झंडे वाली गाड़ी में आए तो मेरे पूरे इलाके को पता चले कि मैं भी कुछ चीज हूँ सो आई रिमेंबर दैट यू नो एंड दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वट हैपन द स्विस एम्बेसडर केम टू द ग्रेव यार्ड टू रिलीज मोनाज बुक सो वेन द फ्रेंच आस्ट मी अबाउट द पिन आई थॉट वाई शुड आई गो टू द फ्रेंच एम्बेसडर्स हाउस एंड यू नो द डिप्लोमैटिक थिंग्स कैन बी क्वाइट स्टफी I said I will accept the pin at the National Museum in front of my book museum. So therefore they had to go and convince Dr. Venu. Luckily they had a photo festival going that please allow her to bring her book museum here and allow us to come here and put the pin and that's exactly what happened. That's me with Dr. Venu very triumphant. because a to be in the national museum you know for all the museums one has been in in the world to be in the national museum between all these forgotten sculptures these are like they're really uh, discarded sculptures third floor near the gents toilet where nobody goes it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that hardly anybody saw it but for me it was very important that my work be there surrounded by these 16th 17th 18th century sculpture i mean they've got such gems in the national museum that for them 16th 17th century is like you know kone mein laga do and then i didn't want i wanted something on the wall between these sculptures so i made these vitrines and put these books not sent a letter but the other books that i had made and i was they looked so perfect there i I was hoping that Dr. Venu would say just leave them here, but he didn't. And then you know, dealing with the government is another matter. But I would have gladly just left them there. But I didn't leave them there.